Today we will discuss about pulmonary edema and cardiac failure. You all know that cardiac failure is defined, defined as a state in which the heart cannot maintain an adequate cardiac output or can do so with an elevated filling pressure. That means the heart is unable to, left ventricle is unable to pump the blood out of the left ventricle. That may lead fluid accumulation in the lung uh, alveoli. It is called as pulmonary edema. So, pulmonary edema is a fluid accumulation in the tissues and air spaces in the lungs that leads to impaired gas exchange and may cause respiratory failure. So, cardiac failure is a one important condition which leads to pulmonary edema but rarely you can have fluid overload like anemia or uh, renal failure all these things can produce uh, pulmonary edema but the most important cause for pulmonary edema is left ventricular failure now we'll see what are the causes for left ventricular uh, sorry pulmonary edema now the most important cause we have already discussed left ventricular systolic failure there is a reduced cardiac contractility and diastolic uh, failure that also can lead to uh, cardiac failure and patient is having abnormally elevated pressure in the left ventricle that uh, transmits to the pulmonary vasculature patient can have uh, problem like uh, fluid accumulation in the lungs so this is called as pulmonary edema and other causes like uh, dilated cardiomyopathy valvular heart disease hypertensive heart disease toxin induced cardiomyopathies alcohol induced cardiomyopathies congenital heart disease all these things can lead to left ventricular failure and pulmonary edema so these are the major causes for uh, pulmonary edema now we'll see what are the triggers for cardiac failure the most important suppose somebody is having a heart disease or sudden patient may be well preserved suddenly patient can deteriorate we'll see what are the causes the one of the important causes infection where the heart rate increases patient can have uh, pulmonary edema fever sepsis anemia beriberi thyrotoxicosis cardiac arrhythmias infective endocarditis increased salt and water intake stress anxiety electrolyte disturbances like uh, 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 potassium de deficiency magnesium deficiency or somebody is taking steroids NSAIDs all these things flu produce fluid accumulation and calcium channel blockers suddenly starting in a patient with cardiac failure all these things can produce cardiac failure so common things are infections anemia beriberi thyrotoxicosis cardiac arrhythmias infective endocarditis excessive fluid intake all these things can trigger a cardiac failure and trigger a pulmonary edema now we'll see what are the clinical features of cardiac failure bar pulmonary edema the common symptoms in cardiac failure will be patient can have fatigue exercise intolerance dyspnea on exertion orthopnea pnd syncope palpitation angina these are the symptoms of uh, cardiac failure signs like uh, like if you have a right uh, ventricular failure you can have peripheral edema pedal edema can be there you can have ascites elevated jvps are common hepatic congestion you have uh, tenderness on liver palpation hepatosplenia megaly congestive hepatosplenia megaly and pulmonary edema the most important clinical finding for pulmonary edema is when you auscultate on the lungs you can have bilateral lower crepitation lung crepitations are very classical finding of pulmonary edema so remember somebody is having cardiac failure coming with breathlessness and auscultation you have bilateral basal crepitation on the lungs it is uh, pulmonary edema due to cardiac failure now what are the investigation you do in a patient with pulmonary edema or cardiac failure so we have already discussed the triggers so we have to find out what are the triggers for cardiac failure so you do an hp percent and rule out anemia and you do a thyroid function test and rule out hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism you do electrolytes and see what happens to the potassium magnesium sodium sodium is an important electrolyte which can be falsely uh, lowered in a patient with cardiac failure because of because of the fluid overload and you have to look for a serum creatinine the renal failure is one of the important cause for both cardiac failure and pulmonary edema so serum creatinine is a very important investigation now we'll see what will be the uh, chest x-ray finding you have to uh, once the patient come with acute breathlessness you will be taking a chest x-ray bilateral extensive fluffy shadows are seen in a chest x-ray with a cardio cardiac enlargement left ventricular enlargement is seen in uh, chest x-ray there are differential diagnosis for this uh, differential diagnosis for a uh, pulmonary edema is one is cardiogenic pulmonary edema other one is non cardiogenic pulmonary edema otherwise it is called as ARDS viral pneumonia x-ray will be same like this eosinophilic pneumonia can be same like this and uh, miliary mottling also can be same like 
this one. But remember bilateral extensive shadows in a patient with acute breathlessness with an enlarged heart indicates a pulmonary edema due to cardiac failure. Now, once you uh, take an x-ray, the next investigation which is most important is, uh, it, it may not be available in every emergency room, but in a uh, good emergency room, B, uh, BNP is available, it is called as B-type natriuretic peptide. This can be elevated in acute left ventricular failure. So, somebody come with acute breathlessness, you are not able to find out what is the cause for that, you do a BNP. The levels more than 500 picogram per ml is generally considered as positive for a cardiac failure. So, BNP is one important uh, uh, lab investigation which, which will tell you that patient is having left ventricular failure is producing the uh, pulmonary edema. Other investigations in a acute pulmonary edema, we already discussed the most common cause for pulmonary edema is a cardiac failure. So, you may do a ECG to know what is what are the ischemic changes ever seen in the ECG. Then you do a, a echo to find out what is the ejection fraction, any valvular lesions are there. So, you need an echo. Ultrasound abdomen is done to know whether a patient has got a hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. TMT is another in investigation that can be done only if the patient is stable. Suppose somebody had a pulmonary edema, you want to know what is the cause for that, you want to know whether it is a ischemic lesion is producing cardiac failure, you can do a TMT afterwards. So, remember you do BNP, you do ECG, you do echo, you can do USG also, USG abdomen also, TMT should be done afterwards. Now, how will we, how, how we are going to manage in a uh, pulmonary edema in an emergency room? So, Take care patient's airway, breathing, circulation. So, you take up the patient inside the emergency room. Put the patient in propped up position. This, is, this uh, position will relieve uh, breathlessness in most of the patients including cardiac failure. So, put the patient in propped up position. If there is a hypoxemia, start him on oxygen. If the patient is not improving, put mask for the patient. If the patient is not improving with your oxygen or oxygen mask, put the patient on BiPAP. That is the best way of treating the patient. BiPAP is a non-invasive ventilation method. You give positive pressure ventilation to this patient. Most of the patients improves with the positive airway pressure and that is called as BiPAP ventilation. Then all the patients should be in propped up position. If the patient is having ischemic lesions in the heart, you can even start NTG infusion. If the BP is high, it is very useful. So, it can start NTG infusion. Then the important drug to be given in a patient with pulmonary edema is Lasix. You give frosamide 80 milligram or 40 to 80 milligram IV. If uh, the patient is improving, uh, you can even repeat the dose. Uh, higher doses can be given. Only problem is potassium can be uh, reduced after repeated infection. That should be taken care. Once the patient is uh, like uh, you put the patient on propped up position, start on BiPAP, give Lasix or Frusamide, then if the patient is not improving, then you have to go for ionotropes. If the BP is low, you have to go for norepinephrine. Otherwise, dopamine with dobutamine is a very good uh, drug of choice in acute emergencies. So, you can start dobutamine that improves the uh, pumping of the left ventricle. So, that can be used. If the patient is having lower BP, try noradrenaline and then go for dopamine or dobutamine to improve the pumping of the heart. So, we have discussed about diuretics previously. Once the patient is stabilized, you have to go for a, uh, either a ta uh, tablet form of uh, diuretics. You can use thiazide diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide, 12.5 to 25 milligram or you have to go for uh, frusamide that is Lasix can be given 40 milligram, uh, one or two tablets per day. But remember that when you start all these things, you are going to lose potassium. So, potassium is very important for heart. It is one of the major drug to prevent cardiac failure. So, you have major uh, electrolyte to prevent cardiac failure. So, you have to use a uh, potassium sparing diuretic, spironolactone. Uh, the spironolactone should be always given with frusamide because frusamide is a good uh, drug to remove the water, but it removes potassium also. You add spironolactone to that. So, you give frusamide 40 milligram, spironolactone 25 milligram combination and those can be slowly titrated up according to the urine output. Then 
in acute settings if the bp is not improving you have a patient with pulmonary edema his bp is very low then you'll have to go for anotropes common anotropes are dobutamin that should be started with 2.5 to 15 microgram per kg per minute infusion according to the bp you can titrate the dose or you can go for phosphodiesterase inhibitors Mildrinone is the one drug available 50 microgram per kg iv bolus over 10 minutes then it should be given 0.375 out to 0.75 microgram per kg per minute. Uh, liver cementan is another drug which can be used in hypo hypotension with cardiac failure. So, dobutamin, mildrinone, liver cementan, all these things are anotropes that can be used in patient with pulmonary edema with a hypotensive phase. Okay. Then once the patient is stabilized, we should think about the diet of this patient. Okay. So, you should restrict salt and water because salt and water, more salt and water will produce more water accumulation. So, you give 2 grams salt per day, 1 to 1 1.2 liter fluid per day. That is a good strategy to prevent fluid accumulation. So, fluid restriction is an important strategy in uh, cardiac failure. Now, the next drug uh, to be used in a stabilized patient after uh, acute episode is ACE inhibitors. You can use captopril, enalapril, ramipril or losartan that is ARB. All these things uh, prevent uh, ACE inhibitors or IRBs stabilizes the LV remodeling that prevents the cardiac dilatation. So, ACE inhibitors or IRBs are a very important drug in cardiac failure but not in pulmonary edema, it prevents further cardiac failure, it prevents LV uh, remodeling. Another important drug to be used in patients with uh, cardiac failure is beta blocker. But remember this drug in acute phase, it may create some problem because it may further reduce the uh, pumping. So, it should be started very cautiously, very slowly, very low dose to, should be started. You can start metoprolol or any other beta blocker with a very low dose, slightly build up the dose so that what happens is your uh, patient's pulse rate will decrease the uh, the work uh, work of the heart will be decreasing the oxygen demand will be decreasing that ultimately it is going to benefit the patient's heart so beta blockers are another drug so three drugs we are uh, four drugs we have discussed that is uh, uh, diuretics um, uh, spirono, with spironolactone uh, ac inhibitors or irbs plus beta blockers these are the triple drug regime for cardiac failure in a uh, control setting that means uh, not in acute phase afterwards once you discharge the patient and digoxin is a, another important drug that should be used when the patient is having uh, tachyarrhythmia especially atrial fibrillation with cardiac failure remember digoxin indication is atrial fibrillation with cardiac failure so the normal dose of digoxin is 0 0.125 to 0 0.25 milligram once daily five days in a week remember it is only five days in a week so digoxin should be used in cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation that is the indication for digoxin so we have discussed the, the acute problems and chronic uh, uh, chronic issues in cardiac failure with pulmonary edema acutely you manage with oxygen propped up position bipap ventilation lasix uh, that is frusamide then once the patient is stabilized you put him on lasix with uh, spironolactone ac inhibitors or irbs plus beta blockers with caution, digoxin should be used in cardiac failure with atrial fibrillation. Thank you.